In this video, we discuss the basics of regression analysis and provide examples to illustrate the concepts. What is regression? Regression analysis refers to a set of statistical techniques for estimating a relationship between a numerical response, or dependent variable, and one or more numerical explanatory, or independent variables. In all cases, we estimate a formula or function to describe the relationships. There are many different types of regression depending on the type of formula used to describe the relationship. The most commonly known type is linear regression in which we use a line of the form y equal ax plus b to model the relationship. Quadratic, relation, uh, quadratic regression uses a quadratic function y equal ax squared plus bx plus c to model the relationship. In cubic regression, a function of the form y equal ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is used. Higher order polynomials can also be used when appropriate. In logarithmic regression, we use a function of the form y equal a plus b times the natural log of x to describe the relationship. In exponential regression, we use an exponential function of the form y equal a times b to the x power. There is also sine regression in which we use a general sine function of the form y equal a times sine of the quantity bx plus c plus d to model the data. As you can see, the TI-84 plus calculator has the capacity to perform any of these regressions plus a few more. How do you know which one to use? This is a reasonable question. The answer depends on the shape of your data. We can determine the shape of the data by looking at a scatter plot. A scatter plot is a graph plotting the values of two numerical variables measured on the same set of individuals. There is one point plotted for each individual with the graph axes representing the two measured variables. I will tell you how this is done on the TI-84 calculator. First, we need to turn on the stat plots function and identify our intended input and output lists. We enter the variables or data into the lists. Then edit the range of view in the window function and select the graph key. The scatter plot is then displayed. Turning the stat plots function on is easily done by following the step shown. Select the stat plots key. Choose one of the four options. I chose plot one. I selected on and made list four my input list and list five my output list. Then I double check by reselecting stat plots to verify that plot one is now turned on. Let's consider four examples. First, IQ scores and brain size are given for six individuals. I put the explanatory variable brain size in list four and the response variable IQ in list five. I edit the range to be displayed by making sure that the X min and X max cover my input values and the Y min and Y max cover my output values. X scale, X SCL, X scale and Y scale indicate what to count by on the X and Y axes respectively. The values of 80 to 110 counting by 10 cover my brain size data and the values 70 to 150 counting by 10 cover my IQ scores. When I push graph, the given scatter plot is displayed. Unfortunately, there does not appear to be any obvious pattern to this scatter plot. 
For our second example, let's consider the age and systolic blood pressure measurements given for, four, for six individuals. If these variables are related, age should be the explanatory variable and blood pressure should be the response variable. I put the given values in list 4 and list 5 respectively. I readjust the window to cover the current values and hit graph. This time the scatter plot displayed shows the data clustering in a linear pattern. Therefore, I can use linear regression on lists 4 and 5 to get a linear equation to model the data. The output of the linear regression is the values of a and b for the line y equal ax plus b. I can add this line to the graph and use it to make predictions about blood pressure at various ages. Let's look at two more examples. In example 3, suppose we have the speed of an automobile in miles per hour and the associated fuel economy in miles per gallon in the given table. To begin our investigation of whether these variables are related, we input the given values in list 4 and list 5. We adjust the viewing window to cover the values given and hit graph. This time, our scatter plot shows a definite pattern, but the pattern is not linear. This is where a general knowledge of basic graphs is useful. Since our scatter plot is reminiscent of a parabola, we use quadratic regression to find a formula of the form y equal ax squared plus bx plus c to describe this relationship. The regression output gives the coefficients a, b, and c that work for our data. We can graph the found parabola with our data to see how close the two fit. Finally, let's consider the average monthly temperatures in Cape Town, South Africa. We've represented each month by the number based on a calendar year. The months represent the explanatory variable and the average temperature is the response variable. We put the given values in lists 4 and 5. Then we adjust the viewing window 0 to 15 for months and 0 to 75 for temperatures and select graph. The scatter plot again shows a definite nonlinear pattern. In fact, the pattern would repeat itself if we added another year of temperature data. This oscillating pattern is symptomatic of a sine curve. Therefore, we're, we use sine regression to produce a sine function modeling our temperature situation. We can graph the regression function with our scatter plot to see how well the function fits the data. Each of the given examples illustrates the general process of regression. Essentially, we identify the explanatory and response variables, then produce a scatter plot of data to look for a general recognizable pattern. Finally, we choose the appropriate form of regression to produce a formula to model our data. It's important to remember that the regression software will happily fit a line to curve data, so we must be careful to use the scatter plot to make an informed choice about the regression method.